So, a little bit different location, which uh, there's not really a good, everything's kind of messy down here. Today is my day to uh, try and get shit organized, but one thing at a time. I have to ride today, obviously, I'm in my riding clothes, but I wanted to introduce something before I went to the barn. <laughs> These are the most epic dressage boots I have ever seen. These are Romatelli. Oh, and they're so beautiful. Oh my God. They are navy, as you can see. I don't know if it's coming up on camera, but they're navy. It's got the croc pattern up here. Swarovski crystals down the side. The croc pattern, this is all patent, and then this is like regular leather where the calf is. <sighs> These are not custom. I will put the website down below for the woman that I got these from. She is based in Florida, um, and in Morrison, Florida, I think. And I basically sent her my sizes and was like, what do you have in my sizes that would work for me? So she sent me these, she sent me a couple options and these ultimately were the ones that I chose. So, I'm so excited. They've got a different, a lot of different price ranges there, anywhere from 500 to 800, $900,000. But relatively speaking, for custom without being custom, very affordable. So I'm going to test these puppies out today. <sighs> but let me show you what we're working with here. We've got, these are so beautiful. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. They fit absolutely perfect. So literally just gave her my sizes and they're perfect. So I'm gonna ride in these today. An outfit of the day, tailored sportsman breeches, tailored sportsman belt, equestrian Stockholm shirt. I have to start working out again. I'm like end of week getting my diet under control. So that's good. I've got my GoPro, which I don't think I'm going to use today. There's only really so many things you can like use at once for trying to film. Then it's just way too much. So, but Got a horse show to prep for today, so I'm going to set up a course. Kind of got my little thing here. I want to practice some rollbacks and bending lines. I'm gonna have two oxers and um, some verticals. I'm gonna bum them up to probably meter 25, meter 30 for Renita, and then just meter for 10 because I'm showing her in the meter, uh, meter 10 to meter 20 which is a very conservative. Um, and then I'm showing 10 in 0.85.95. So. Yes, that's the plan for today. I'm just waiting to leave. Lessons don't end until like two. So I'm gonna let everything charge here for a little bit, get some more work done on the computer and then go from there. So yes. So obviously we've got Zeke. Um, this was, I mean, weeks and weeks and weeks ago. So this was probably three weeks ago or yeah, probably three weeks ago that I filmed these. Um, but he's still a little bit off in these videos, um, but he's definitely a lot better. 
So he is still pretty stiff. So I'm really not focusing too, too much about the frame or how he's going. I'm just trying to get him a little bit forward and just trying to get him to relax and loosen up a little bit. Um, so through most of it, that's kind of what you see me doing. Um, just a little bit of flexing to the inside, a little bit of flexing to the outside, and you'll see him kind of drop his head a little bit, which is what I want. I want him to relax the underside of his neck and um, drop down and relax his jaw. So that's really the most of what I'm, what I'm doing here with him. Um, I always warm up at the walk first and then the trot. And as you can see, he really braces quite a bit and stiffens the underside of his neck and just kind of roots against the bit. And that is kind of his MO um, from what it seems like based on how he's ridden, according to Debbie, that um, he's been used to adult amateurs hanging on his face for balance. So he's very he's very um, protective of his back so I just he's he's been ridden like that for so long where it just he's like I don't believe that you're gonna let go <laughs> of my face is essentially <laughs> what's what's happening so every time I go to take that check to say hey I want you to get a little bit deeper and relax a little bit more he's like uh, no so that's pretty much just what I'm doing. Um, I start out at the posting trot and then um, eventually I'll go to the sitting trot. So here basically what I'm doing is I'm giving him a half halt and I'm basically bracing my hips against him to almost act like if you were asking for a halt because what I'm trying to do when I half halt he should get rounder and he should get deeper but he doesn't he throws his head forward, hollows his back, and braces against my hands. So essentially what I have to do and to get him to where he needs to be is just half halt, half halt, half halt, let go, half halt, let go, half halt, let go. <laughs> and then that's basically the entirety of our rides right now. So it's just a lot of tedious writing and very specific writing to get him back to where he needs to be because it's not for an upper level dressage horse if I half halt they should get deeper and they should get softer and they should get rounder he should not lift his head up in the air and brace against my hands so Ideally, the goal is for it to feel so light and airy and effortless in your hands that 
it just you're you're only using your fingers. You're you're not using force you're not using and it's just your fingers and unfortunately right now he is just not at that point he knows how to do that he just has been ridden in such a way that was on the forehand and stiff on the underside of his neck for so long that he does not have the muscles to do so anymore so it's just it's it's a long process it's an ugly process it's not ideal but it it's it's got to be done unfortunately so i like to show you guys the whole process and this is where we're at but his canner works getting a lot better um he much prefers the canner than the trot the canner is a lot easier for him than the trot is which is funny because 10 is the exact opposite but his left lead has gotten so much better I did have to get his right coffin joint injected again, and it still is not 100%, so we may have to do Pro Stride, which is a significantly more expensive, but we're kind of just waiting to see how everything goes with him in Florida, and if we still think that that's an issue, even after his next round of shoeing, just to see how how it goes because his angles are very very close to being fixed um we'll see but he did get his stifles injected as well so i'm hoping there's no more injections we need but the fact that he hasn't had any maintenance and he's 16 and he had all those issues just caused a lot more issues so i, I probably have a little bit more to go before before we get to where we're we're smooth sailing so I mean, clearly here you can see he's just hollowing his back, tensing his back, throwing his head up in the air. He's doing the movements, but he's not doing them soft. And I'm just trying to get him loose. I'm just trying to get him broken free, do some lateral work. Um, it Honestly, this doesn't look good at all, but it is what it is. Um, the nice thing about this ride that we had, he wasn't pulling on me. And that's where we had been that's where he had been is just dragging me so honestly i'd much rather have him hollow out for a couple strides and then go back instead of taking the bit and pulling me down because he is way too big and way too strong of a horse for me to be able to ride him like that it just it will tear up my shoulder which i'm already going to physical therapy for so <laughs> Horses that horses that are like that honestly are the biggest struggle. It's much easier to get them to go from a head up in the air hollow than pick them up from being heavy on the forehand. So it's it's a lot more difficult. I would much rather start off with a horse that's hollow with their head up in the air. <laughs> but clearly, I mean obviously this does not look the greatest, but in my book, it's a win because I'm not being pulled, if that makes sense.
So now we've got 10 and I jumped him this day. He was so, so, so good. He was having so much fun. Um, but he's, he's come so far. I'm just so proud of, so proud of him. Oh, he's so cute. Also, his canner work has gotten a lot, lot better, but oh my god, watch, watch, watch. Oh my god, he did a lead change, and he didn't freak out about it. He gets so stressed out about lead changes, and I just went across and then just kind of asked very politely, and he was like, okay. So if you go back and you see right there, um, he still, like, like right there too, he, yeah, in there, you can see how he's pulling my hands down. So he basically, he can rock back on his hind end for a few strides, and then he has to throw his head down on the forehand and get his balance. So it's really hard for him, especially with how long of a back he has, and just conformationally, he's a little bit longer. So it's a lot harder for him to, one, collect, and two, use his hind end. So... When he canters, he can get that hind end underneath him, but it's it's not it's not he's not strong enough yet to hold it. So he inevitably has to reshift his balance forward, which ends up like yanking me down and yanking me forward. So if you see that, that's that's what that right there you saw that too right there again. So that's what that is. Again, why I would prefer having a horse that isn't on the forehand and having to try and bring them up.
honestly, I'm just so proud of him. He did not even refuse anything. He questioned a couple of them the first time we went over them that you saw, but he was so good. This one was totally my fault. Totally. I just got way ahead of him, and he he saved me on it. He was like, I got you, Mom, even though I, do you, you, I don't know what you're doing up there. He's so good. Oh, my gosh. I'm just so proud of him. And I was I was introducing some pretty some pretty tricky things to him and he just was like Okay, let's do it. I'm so excited. Let's do it. He just was happy to be doing it. He was happy to be jumping and he is just so freaking good. Oh, I just love him so much. I have nothing else but good things to say about him because he just he tries so hard. He's so good. So Renita was really good this day, kind of. <laughs> she she was just like she was really really hot today, like or today the day that this was. She was really really hot. She was just her brain was going eight thousand miles per minute, and I even like sacked her out and ran her around for quite a bit before this. But she was just like, and I hadn't I haven't jumped her prior to this video in quite a while, so. That's probably what it was because she saw the jumps up and she's like, oh my God. So just trying to get her focused and get her relaxed like while she sees the jumps goes kind of like this. So basically what I did was I tried to flex her to the right and she was just like, oh my God, absolutely freaking not. Like not happening. We're not doing it. So yeah. <laughs> So basically when I warm her up, I essentially am just trying to get her listening to me, getting her focused, but she clear, she just like can't focus on anything else when she sees the jump. She's just like, my God, this is so exciting. I just want to just, I just want to jump them. Let me jump them. Let's do this. Like screw warming up. And I'm like, girl, no focus. So there I'm trying to do a little bit of a shoulder in and she's like, nope, not happening. Nope. So I'm just trying to send her forward because she likes the, dr the dramatic. She likes to make she likes to try and intimidate me, but it doesn't work. And I'm just like, no, go. We're going forward. Just listen to me. So that's kind of what I'm doing here. And she just, in general, was quite a handful this evening. But nonetheless, she was really, really good. So I come back around, so I'm doing, a, I always start off with a trot jump. And this one was quite difficult because you can't see in the video, but that oxer is right at the end. So through this jump, she's looking at the oxer. So I'm like having to try and trick her and turn her before the fence, but like turn her, not turn her enough to where we don't jump it. And so she just, she keeps seeing that oxer at the end of this line and is like, oh my God. And so she just, her brain is just like, 
on overload. And so I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to just go ahead and switch to the other side. And then she just, I got left behind and I was like, my gosh, just listen to me. <laughs> so I do a couple more trot jumps. And then after this, she starts kind of listening a little bit more, which was really nice. Um, but yeah, she just, again, hothead today. So this jump, she was like, oh God, oh my God, what is that? What is that? <laughs> because it was obviously hard to see the pole and there's no ground line there because I ran out of poles. So she was just like, oh my God. She was like a little freaked out about this jump. Look at how high over it she jumped. <laughs> she was like, ooh. So I just thought it was really funny because she was just like, I, she couldn't, she could not figure this jump out. And it just was kind of the funniest thing ever and I don't know I just thought it was hilarious but she got it eventually and she was like ah, okay I see <laughs> but yeah she was I mean through the lines she was pretty good she was very very careful up until the end when it seemed like she started getting tired and I pulled her out in front of this fence because when she gets all hoppy like that I'm not gonna reward her by letting her go over the fence like she has to, I mean, she can pop up, but she has to listen to me. Like, she has to listen to me. So this fence coming up, obviously I've raised it and she was about to refuse this, but then went over it and obviously clipped all those rails. So I patted her because I was like, honestly, like you didn't refuse it. You went through it. Like uh, you're, that's great. Good girl. So then once I set that back, obviously I checked your legs to make sure her legs were good to go. And then I set them back up and then I went back through and she ended up doing really, really good for the last couple fences, but really, really happy with how she did. 